So, uh, recording another quote unquote video. It's going to be a black screen for all these. It's just an idea that I had. But, uh, podcast, I don't know how long each episode will be. It'll probably be just what I feel like for the day or whenever I record it. It's not going to be a daily thing. The podcasts aren't going to be on a schedule or anything. Because, frankly, I cannot care less about schedules and shit. And sometimes I just need a place to get my mind off shit. And I think a podcast will be a good way to do stuff. Because it also lets me know my... Or not lets me know my audience more, but lets my audience know me more. So, uh, for this episode of the podcast, I think I'm going to talk about one of my prior relationships. Not the first one that I was in, which I already made a video about, but only one of the three that I have been in that ended well. But, I think I'm going, I don't know whether I'm going to talk about the second and third both entirely, or just do parts of each, but let's start with the second. So, how I met the person from the second relationship I was in, it was coincidentally enough over Discord. We were both in an RP server, and we pretty commonly roleplayed with each other. Now, it wasn't any ERP, nothing explicit at all. It was just basic, like, high school RP stuff. And this was when I was still in high school. Both of us were the same age. I made sure to confirm beforehand. And, yeah, it was really fun being able to RP with them and even just talk to them outside of that. Slowly over time, I began to feel that maybe there was something more than just a feeling of friendship because... Every time I talked to them, or RP'd with them, I would feel something in my heart, and I, I'd feel my cheeks starting to warm up. So, I thought that I was getting feelings for them, and at this point, unfortunately, here's where the negatives come in. Because this was after the first time that I was told that they took their life, and that first time that I was told that, it ended up affecting me so much that I started having thoughts of doing that myself because I lost someone who was such a close friend, or at least I thought I lost someone who was such a close friend, and I ended up having to go to a mental hospital because I had thoughts of taking my own life already, from the death of my dog, and hearing about that, it's just one thing on top of another, only to find out, not too long after I got out of the mental hospital, that it was fake. They didn't actually attempt suicide or take their life, and keep in mind, this was before the relationship thing. So, my thought process was, okay, just still keep an eye on them, It may have been something where they were planning it, they were going to do it, and then they randomly just stopped themselves last second and think, fuck. So, we kept talking. I made sure to check in on them as frequently as I could while trying not to annoy them at the same time because I know that they had had issues. And I feel like one of the big things that maybe weakened the relationship and made them test me when the relationship started is because before I'm I can't even just say before before and during the relationship as well I had focused entirely on them always making sure they were okay every time they tried to check on me I would just keep it as minimal as possible try to make Everything as much about making sure they were okay, making sure their mental health was in a good state as much as possible. Because with everything that they had been going through, which I'm not going to air someone else's dirty laundry, even if it is a relationship I'm bitter about. But with all that they had been through, it was easy to see why 
they had those thoughts and they did let me know before we were in the relationship that they were trans and they were born female transitioned to male so that would be FTM trans and I had clarified that I have no issue with that it's not something that bothers me and I still love them just the same but when the relationship had started, it was seemingly going well for a bit until I got another text saying that they had taken their life and from it was from a person claiming to be their brother. So this time I had a bit of skepticism due to what happened the time before and I didn't let it affect me as much. I just responded with something like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry for your loss. I, My condolences to you. And then the very next response from them was, Wow, I can't believe you actually fell for that. And that is what pissed me off. Because treating it like it's a fucking joke... It's someone taking their own life. That's not a goddamn joke. As someone who has been in that position several times, and eight of my ten failed attempts being before that time frame, yeah, that made me pretty livid to find out that was all a joke. And that wasn't even the last time. It happened like two more times, and that's where it got to the point where I was like, look... I still care about you. I still want to be friends. You still mean the world to me. But hearing that you took your life and then being told that it was just a test or a joke so commonly is starting to seriously screw with my head. And I can't deal with that right now. I still love you just as much. I just can't do this when it's fucking with my mental health that much. So, I broke it off. As I feel I made the right decision in that case. Because with everything that they were saying, with how commonly there was a suicide bait, I... As someone who had been in that situation even throughout all that time of wanting to take my life, having a plan of what to do to take my life at the time, it I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I decided it would be best to focus on doing what's best for me and as much as I love them, letting them go. So that's how the second one ended. And then we get into my most recent relationship. The one that, even though it's not for the same reasons as the last one, it's the relationship I'm most bitter about. Because the second relationship, it's the one that pisses me off most. Because the repeated suicide baiting. And while this last one that I was in doesn't leave me as infuriated... It leaves me more bitter and frustrated. And for context, I met this person on a dating app that neither of us were supposed to be using because we were both, uh, fifth or oh, wait. What, what? Okay, sorry. They were two years younger than me. I was 16, they were 14. Only two year age gap because that's what I've always limited myself to. If they're two year if they're more than two years below my age, nope. If they're more than two years above my age, also nope. But yeah, they were 14, I was 16. And we started of course we started talking, getting to know each other, obviously. Then a few days in, I decided to ask if they wanted to try it out. And they said yes, so we just continued talking throughout that next day. And by the end of that first day that we were together, they said that 
they were going to break it off. They felt they weren't ready and that they rushed into something, which I respected. Yeah, it hurt, but at the same time, I knew it would be best to let them find their own path. If they felt they weren't ready, I could try at some other point. So that's what I did. We built a really strong friendship over the course of a year, became really close to each other, always looking out for each other. And so after that year, I decided to ask again if they would like to get together again. And again, they said yes. It wasn't the same thing that happened this time, thankfully, but something different. Not before the relationship started, not after it ended, but in the middle of it, they just wouldn't respond to anything. I tried to communicate with them, I tried to talk to them, and I can understand like one to two days of no responses. Shit happens, but so often it was three to five days of nothing, and at one point it even got as much as two weeks without a single word of response, and every other time that I actually did get a response, it was like two or three words. And this really fucked me up. Not mentally, or actually, yes, it would be mentally. There's no real other way to describe it, but it made me so frustrated and still does because the amount of effort that I put in, and I thought that they put in, to give it another try, only for this to be what happened, it just, ah, it still pisses me off to this day. I spent an entire year, wasted an entire year of my life, trying to build a friendship up with this person, and what did they do? Not before, not after, only during the relationship. Ghost me multiple times. Which just... I will never not be better about that. Because I fucking loved them more than anything. And it still fucking breaks me that I broke up with them. Even though I do believe that I made the right decision. Because... Yes, I know I have issues with clinginess, but at the same time, five days to two weeks of not getting a response isn't really too clingy one if you get concerned about someone over that amount of time. And they said that they were moving, which at the time, I just said, okay, I'm sorry that I was so clingy, and I hope you can find someone that loves you even more than I did, which I blamed it a lot on myself, and I still do, I still do blame part of it on myself, because I know how clingy I am, I know I have a lot of attachment issues, because I, I didn't accept a lot of the motherly affection that I was given as a child, and instead brushed it off as not receiving any motherly affection. And then I didn't receive any fatherly affection at all. My father never wanted anything to do with me until I started hating my grandparents because he hates my grandparents as well. And because of never receiving any fatherly affection and having father issues, and neglecting a lot of the motherly affection that I had been given, I have always had attachment and clinginess issues. Because when I am feel close to someone, I will give everything. Like, I don't just die for them, I fucking live for them. Every part of my being in existence goes to making sure they're okay. So yeah... I know that I'm too clingy. It's not like it's something that I haven't tried to fix and that I'm not still working on. But even with that, five days to two weeks of no response multiple times is ridiculous. For a relationship that went on for two months, all of that just... 
it fucked with me so much. And at the end of the day, I just decided, you know what? I don't need this. It's not done anything for me. And I know that's being selfish. But I think for once in my life, I deserve to be selfish. Because my entire purpose in life is to protect others. To make sure others are okay. Whatever happens to me, happens to me. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, I'll be upset. But at the end of the day, I don't really have any control over what happens to me. And if anything negative happens to me, well, so be it. I fucking deserve it. Tough shit. Because with how much I've harmed people in the past, I deserve so much worse than what life has given me. I know I'm an irredeemable, unsalvageable, complete monster. And that's why whenever something bad happens to me, I don't try to act like it's undeserved because I know it is. But exhausting so much time and energy to try to make sure someone is safe. To make sure someone knows that they're cared about, that they're loved, only to receive nothing. Like I said, I know it's selfish, but I just... So much time wasted and down the drain. All because I... All because I was stupid enough to think that after a year of trying to build up a friendship that maybe it would work out different this time. Maybe we'd really hit it off and it would end up being a successful relationship. Only to be used as an emotional support toy until I was not needed anymore and then I was thrown away. Which, again, another negative thing that I deserved. Not specifically for anything done to them, but just for actions throughout my entire life. And even though I deserve that because of how shitty of a person I've been throughout my life, I'm not going to act like it doesn't hurt because it absolutely does. Every time I think about it, it is just mental agony. An entire fucking year of my life that I could have used on so many more important things. That I could have used to keeping my school grades up. That I could have used to spending time with my niece. That I could have used to work on my passion for music and try to build up a career. All thrown to the thrown in the trash because Instead of dedicating it to those things, I dedicated it to trying to make something work with someone, only for nothing to come from it. Which just, that's the big reason I'm bitter. I know it's my fault, I spent so much time on it, but no matter how much I know it's my fault, it doesn't make me any less bitter with how everything happened. I feel like I was toyed with. Like I was a tool that was just stringed along for their amusement. Like an emotional support puppet, as I said a few minutes ago. Just, whenever they need emotional support, they call me. And whenever they don't, I'm never in their thoughts. And they throw me away. Until I need it again, which they will scrape me from the very bottom of the trash can and then immediately throw me back into the darkest steps of the trash can as soon as they are done using me again. Which, that is one of the worst feelings there is. I know the feeling of being emotionally toyed with. I know the feeling of betrayal. I know the feeling of wanting 
to help someone so bad that it gets to be incredibly detrimental for your own mental health. And the other person abuses it and takes advantage of it to manipulate and get what they want out of you. And having all that happen just... It it fucking hurt a lot. Because I loved this person more than anything. I fucking lived for them. And you have to keep in mind how powerful that is. As someone who at the time had 8 suicide attempts that have all failed. And now has 10 attempts that have all failed. I was living for them. Which means so much more than dying for someone. And to have all that happen. It just. It mentally fucking broke me. Even multiple years later. I can't say I'm over it. I'm not going to act like I'm over it. Even though the breakup happened in 2022. I'm not over it. I'm not going to act like I am over it. I'm not going to act like it doesn't still affect me. Just because I wrote a poem about it, and because I'm writing a song about it right now, doesn't mean that I don't feel the same amount of pain, if not more, than I did in the moment. And, honestly, those... uh, Oh, another important thing I forgot to note. This person, not the same person as the last one, but another uh, FTM trans. So, born female, transition to male. Which, I'm not going to hold against the transgender community. These were two bad apples who I even hesitate to call that. At the time, all of us were young and confused when the relationships were happening. And even though I'm sure that these people have changed for the better, it doesn't change everything that happened, and it doesn't make the way I feel about the events that happened any less valid. So the transgender community, I have nothing against you for this, because you didn't do anything wrong. It was two people who just so happened to be bad apples at the time and probably cleaned up their act since. And now back to the main point. (laughs) I'm not going to act like I'm not desperate. Despite not being alone in my life, despite having several friends, co-workers that I love being around and make me actually desire to go to work, despite having a family... (laughs) The best fucking family I could ask for that so many people miss out on because people are shitty today. Even despite having all that, I still feel lonely. And I am incredibly desperate to try to get in a relationship. I'm not going to act like I'm not. Yes, there's the issues of self-confidence oftentimes because I know how horrendously ugly I am I know how hideous I look I know that I have no redeeming qualities other than protectiveness which whoopie do so many people are protective but even though I know there's nothing positive about me that you can't find in someone else that doesn't make it hurt less because yeah I'm still desperate I'm not gonna Try to blow it off like I'm not, because that'll only make it bottle up and come back later. And the the reason why I don't actively try to seek anything out is because of those two relationships. I'm afraid, and I'm not going to act like I'm not scared. Because history tends to repeat itself, whether it be for countries, for cities, for towns, even just for individuals. And with the pattern of my relationships and how they have gone, 
I am scared to get into another relationship where, because when I'm in a relationship, I commit everything I have, and I'm scared of committing everything just to receive nothing and end up losing everything in the end. So, even though I'm lonely, it's just something that I deal with. My loneliness is something that I wallow in because I can't escape my fear and I don't know how to escape my fear. I can try to use my coping mechanisms. I can try to do whatever I want, but at the end of the day, my fear still has a stranglehold over me and controls me because I don't know what to do to beat my fear. And I know this has been a pretty depressing video, so I'm sorry about that. I just thought that this would let you guys get to know me a bit better, at least on the mental or mentality and past aspects of my life. So I hope you guys enjoyed first episode of Tife Talks. I'll see you whenever I record another one.